Hey, what's up everybody? This is Joshua Casper. Welcome to another Ableton Live video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you four different ways of getting side chaining done inside of Ableton Live. Each one of them serves a different purpose. So it depends on what you're trying to do and what plugins you have, which is going to kind of determine which one of these methods you use. My favorite one I'm going to save for last, and it's one that I actually only recently learned about, only because I didn't really need it with the third one that I was using. So let's go ahead and listen to the bass and kicks together without sidechain compression and just know that each one of the following compression examples have the exact same audio inside of them. So there's nothing tricky going on. It's just to show you different ways to get sidechaining done. Also, this is not a tutorial about best sidechain compression settings for each compressor or anything like that. It's just different ways to get the routing done inside of Ableton Live. So let's go ahead and listen. So if we turn on the compressor and we turn on side chaining and then we do the audio from the kick channel here, we start to get that pumping sound. Oh, I just have the ratio cranked, the attack down real low and I have RMS on. So this type of compression is what I always use when I'm first getting my ideas into Ableton. I don't like to mess around with a bunch of different uh, more complicated routing, even if it means I get a better compressor. When I'm just trying to get the idea out, this compressor is the one I use because it's so simple and so easy to use. Now, there comes a problem if you're making something like EDM and you want the pumping to continue when there isn't a kick. So if you look right here, the pumping is only happening when there is a kick. So the way to do that is to set up what's called ghost side chaining. And that leads us to our second example here. If we come over here, now we have a ghost side chain. It's titled ghost right here. And essentially it's just four to the floor, but it could be any pattern. Again, I, I just wanna keep stressing this because I always get comments that are kind of like, oh, you didn't do that. There are a million ways. I'm just using four to the floor for the example purposes. So please, I don't need the commentary about how four to floor isn't the end all be all of music. So come on. The way ghost chaining works is I'm taking the side chain to the ghost channel and I'm using that to duck the audio. And what I have to do to make it quote unquote ghost is turn off the audio. So if we go ahead and listen now. It's very common to use that type of thing for pads or leads that you want a little bit of motion to and just not a steady uh, gain signal right across the board. So the way to do that is just to duplicate the kick into its own channel, turn off the audio because if we have the audio on, we're gonna still hear the audio. And that's not good. We wanna turn it off and then put our kick in its own channel and just usually I title it ghost and if I'm using a ghost side chain, I put it all the way up at the top of the project just so I can keep things organized because the, the audio is not coming out and I like to know where things are. So now we have the pumping. Whether or not the actual kick that's being heard is playing. So that's the second way. The third way is how do you route when you have a third party compressor? And this is a little bit more complicated, but not really. So here we have what is essentially a ghost channel again. You can't hear it, but if you notice, the channel is activated. And actually, if you turn off this, you won't get the sidechain effects. So let me show you what I mean. Inside of the base channel that I want sidechain, I have the Dube Tech compressor, and I have it set to external sidechain bus selection. The way to route it is again, have your pumping, whatever pattern you want. So if we didn't want this, if we didn't want that pumping right there, we could just, uh, you know, copy the kick here, delete this, and put the kick section there. And that way, we'll get the, the pumping wherever we want it. But again, pattern isn't my purpose here, just how to get the routing done. So for this, we need to leave the channel on. That's different than if you're using Ableton's native devices, and that's because their device is native to Ableton. And if you look on the ins and outs right here, there is what's coming in and what's going out. So here we wanna go out to track nine. That means the audio from here is gonna get pumped into here. And then any devices you have on that track, audio nine in this case, that can accept external audio sources will be listed here. For our purposes, it's the Tube Tech compressor. I'm just gonna select it. And now when the audio plays, if I turn off the kick, 
we're getting essentially ghosting, but without deactivating the track. It's just that this audio is being pumped straight into that compressor to trigger the compression settings. Got it? Good. Now there's the fourth way, which is a more dynamic way of doing stuff. If you look here, I have three tracks set up, but I only have two audio sources. So I don't even need to pump anything in here. And this is if you're gonna be making a break beat or if you're gonna be adding like buildups with your kicks and you know fills and stuff like that or doing anything kind of nifty and you want the kick that you're using in your project to be the thing that's ducking maybe your sub bass, which is a very common use for side chaining. So the way to do this is actually, again, leave the audio on, but you're gonna go audio in from the kick source. So here it's on channel 15. So I wanna come down to audio in from channel 15. I wanna make sure my in is selected on the source, auto off, nope, we want in. And then we want that audio. So this audio is gonna come into this blank channel. And then from this blank channel, we want it to go into the track with the compressor. And again, it's just a tube tech compressor on there. I'm gonna to go to channel 13, which is that audio. And then again, we're gonna select the device from the drop down menu to make sure we're going directly into it. And now if we play it. We're getting the side chain wherever the audio is. So now I don't have to worry about it. Maybe I wanna make a build up right here. Douche, douche. You know what I mean? I could do something like this. And I don't need to worry about having to duplicate this into the ghost sidechain like you do with the Ableton Live version of sidechain compression. So I like to call this the dynamic way of doing stuff. So that's five different ways of doing sidechain routing inside Ableton Live. And again, like I said in the beginning, each one has its benefits and drawbacks, and each one is gonna be better for certain situations. I'm just trying to teach you guys different ways to do different things inside of one of the best DAWs ever created. Am I right? Anyway, like, subscribe, comment if you made it this far, and uh, I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. Peace.